Om Shanti, everyone, welcome. Let's just start the one minute of silence. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. And as you tap into your inner silence, feel the peace. And as we are gathered here to explore on success, tell to the self that I'm ready to deeply look at the success. That what does it take for me to be successful? And tell to the self that success is my birthright. I'm ready to explore on and endorse success. So I free my mind, free myself, make myself ready for the next two hours, deeply understand and accept this as my birthright. Every moment, this is guaranteed. With this beautiful thought, Let's start with our activities. There are many have joined. So the very uh, beginning part, as we always uh, tell you, is that all the sessions we have been doing, uh, it's almost a year now, Actually, we started in December, and it's always very beneficial as we um, learn and take um, the thoughts, the learnings uh, about practicing these values in our life. So we did patience last um, on 11th of September, and today is the success. And to begin with today, we have the very first question for all the team. You know, all the facilitators, as you have seen from now and then on different sessions, different facilitators join. So um, I'll close this. So I would request all the facilitators to open their video. We have Sister Puja, Shruti, Sister Kosha, Sister Shivani, Sister Vidhi, um, Sister Preeti as Sudarshanado, but Preeti sister, Rina sister. And um, we have Swati sister, if you can open your video. We have Dr. Mehta, we have Nikhil, brother Nikhil. We are the team uh, who work behind the scene, if not facilitating also to make these sessions possible. And of course we have uh, Dr. Manoj Bhai, that's really good if you are here and if you can open up. Um, and we have, yeah, so what is the first question? We'll start and we hear from them about success. So it is for them today. The icebreaker will begin with, let me open it. The question that we'll ask all of them is, what does success mean to you? But in one word, if it is possible or not, but at least a small phrase. So very quickly, can we hear it from all of you? What does success mean to you in one word? We can start with maybe Dr. Mehta, if you can open your video, oh, sorry, audio. 
Pain is a word, is a deity, devta, but it means dani, mahadani, vardani, be the giver, what you have. Share. Be the giver and share. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Sister Puja. Um, one word I would say discipline. Discipline. Discipline is success. Yes. Be the sister. I'll just go that way so that we'll be quick. Inner happiness. Inner happiness. Sruti sister. My word is santushtata or satisfaction. So if I'm, if I'm satisfied, I'm always successful. Beautiful. Shivani sister. Yeah, I think if I'm able to bring a smile to others, especially yeah. if they're experiencing worse situations, yeah, that's a smile. Bringing a smile in others' face, <clears throat> that is success. Thank you. I'll request everyone else to uh, mute themselves. Um, yes, Kosha is there. Oh, the one word that describes a success to me is contentment, because unless you're contented in what you have, uh, you'll always be running and you will not find success. So contentment is my word. Contentment, that brings you that stability, that slowing down that you can achieve success. That's beautiful. Thank you. Sister Preeti. Uh, my one word is again, uh, happiness, but I would explain it in the form of uh, alignment with your inner being, our original inner being. So when we are aligned, we are happy and that is success to me. Inner alignment, inner qualities. Thank you. Om Shanti and uh, greetings from Madhuban. Shanti Stam, I'm sitting right now and beautiful blessings to all of you from here. And for me, uh, success is the power to create the right thought at the right time. Power to create the right thought at the right time. That's really powerful. Thank you. Yes. Brother Nikhil. Yes, yeah, so for me, is uh, lightness or bliss inside? Lightness or? Uh, a, a value of bliss. Okay, bliss. Lightness and bliss. So nice. Thank you so much. For me, it is peace within. Peace. Peace with me, peace with others. That's success. That's what I thrive for. So uh, I know a lot of people are putting on the chat box. We'll take it up. We'll put it on the uh, our slide that we will share with you later on. But these are the team. And we wanted to bring it up to you today that we work behind the scene. And we love it when we are here with all of you and all the participants without you. It cannot be successful. So we are all together a part of this success. Thank you all the facilitators for uh, participating and sharing. Um, I think I'll take it two minutes to read out the chat box, at least the wordings that we get. Being useful is success, contentment, determination, gratitude to the almighty. That's what Manoj brother says. Uh, enlightenment. Fulfillment, become Dehi Abhimani, that is soul conscious, uh, desired outcome, okay, desired outcome is success, Swarajya, that is self-sovereignty, what is that, the inner qualities, like Sister Preeti said, that I'm in alignment, then success is living my divine truth, surrendering to spiritual master, satisfaction, Look at that. Are we already feeling that power? And power brings us success. Thank you so much. I think we have Archana, sister. Is it Archana? It says Aruna, though. Okay. Not sure. So all is good. So thank you so much. That is a really good start. And um, I'm loving this moment. So that's the success. With that, let's move to our first, very first exercise. And that is, as we always do, 
uh, we will start with um, reflecting on the attributes of a successful person. So it's easy as we can now sit and think just for a few moments to look, look around in our life that who is that around us is successful, that I recognize them as successful. Then what are the attributes they reflect, they show to the world? So we will go through that. As you can see here, the steps show so many things, but there is much more than this. As we just heard that inner power of um, bliss, contentment, alignment with the self, so many other aspects that are needed to achieve success. But in this first exercise, look at the reflection question that reflect about a successful person who has inspired you. It could be a historical person, a political figure or spiritual person or any close relative. Who is that around you in your life? That as you think right now, come as the successful person. And the question that you have to write down is, which qualities or values are associated with their success? That you recognize that those qualities and values that they have, have made them successful. So we'll just take one minute and write it down on our notebook before we go on to sharing. So I hope you all um, are able to recognize the spiritual, sorry, the successful person that you have identified around you, who has inspired you, what are the qualities and values associated with them. And we'll, this will be a quick chat box sharing. We'll request you to put it on the chat box. I read it, Dadi Prakashmani, somebody writes. So what is the quality or value you recognize in her? as you see her as the successful person. So I hope it is quick that you can put it on the chat box, the name, if you like to share. You don't have to even share the name if you don't, but the value and qualities, the balance of love and law, that, that is Dadi Prakashman. And She's the leader who created leaders, right? Anyone else? There are no sharings on the chat box. Brahma Baba, the father, founding father of Brahma Kumaris, Brahma Baba. The qualities we didn't see. Nelson Mandela, humility, determination, fearless, courageous, and humanitarian. 
Look how many qualities go to make success. Dadi Jan ki determination. So Dadi Jan ki determination, connection with one God for support and makes all happy. Whoever Okay. That also makes us success, a little bit of fun. <laughs> Dreaming of kids. Okay. Um, we have Hanuman. Somebody writes Hanuman. So that's the spiritual or spiritual figure or God as we um, know him as. So didn't care about outcome or what happened to him. So carefree. Courageous, Hanuman. Um, then comes Mahatma Gandhi. Qualities, determination and faith in values. Another uh, sharing, Mahatma Gandhi, self-mastery. Another sharing, Mama. That's uh, Mama Jagadamba at Brahma Kumaris as we know her very lovingly. So her qualities, intelligence and obedience, that made her obedience. Um, Stephen Hawking, uh, Rajna says, self-leadership, determination and persistence, courage. We have Mother Teresa, non-judgmental and compassionate, dedicated to service of others. Um, Anjana says, my coach, action taker, believe in self and almighty. Aruna says, PM Modi, commitment, sensitive, sensitive, consistent, hardworking, never give up attitude. We got everything. If we pile up everything today and put it on our wall, then success cannot run away from us. But we have to implement all of that, I'm sure. Um, BK Aruna, um, Sant uh, uh, Dhyaneshwar worked only for mankind, overcome all odds, peaceful all the time, and great uh, Marathi poet. So maybe Dr. Mehta would know, will know Sant, uh, Sant um, Dhyaneshwar. Then again, uh, Gandhiji, determination, simplicity, dedication. Uh, again, Brahma Baba become Karm Yogi um, to give practical um, as experience of the seven qualities of soul, knowledge, purity, peace, love, happiness, bliss, and power. To become first prince of golden age is success. Okay. Truthy sister says, uh, uh, my father, um, humility, patience, generosity, big thinker, uninhibited by setbacks and good listener empathy. I hope you are able to write down Puja sister, but I think we can send it to all the participants later A look for it in your email. I'm sure this is a great collection of all the qualities and values that will always make us successful and happy. Um, sister Jayanti, Sister Jayanti, our very senior Sister Jayanti, who is the director of European Brahma Kumaris. Um, her qualities, delicate but powerful, clean and powerful intellect, can speak at any level. Um, Narendra Modi, dedication, creative, love for nation, unlimited, giving everything to the country. Dadi Janki, willpower. Sister Shivani, Peace in internal world. Uh, Sachin Tendulkar, calm, tenacity, and surrender to the cause. Um, Baba Amte, compassion, determination, clear vision, efforts. Uh, again, Nikhil Brother says his own uh, friend, hard work, love for what they do, and discipline. With this sister says, um, okay. <laughs> So um, again, another one is Dadi Janki, great and successful leader who create more leader worldwide. 
unbelievable. And uh, I'm so happy to read all of that. So it's a great collection of qualities and all the people who have shown us the example of being successful. So beautiful start. I want to thank everyone for this beautiful, generous sharing. And now let's move into experiencing ourselves and looking into ourselves that what is that um, make us successful that we can take us with us. So for that, I'll hand it over to Sister Shruti. Take it over. Thank you. Thank you, Anna Behan. I'll start sharing my screen. So, um, you know, as we get into today's exercise, the first thing we will do is a visualization and then we'll get into action planning. Um, as we think about the visualization and action planning, I think the first thing we need to keep in mind is that there is creative energy in our thoughts. The thoughts we create again and again turn into reality. If we always keep in mind that whatever happens to me will be good, then only good will continue, happen, continue to happen in our lives. And we will always be successful in whatever we do. So let's begin. Sit straight. Take a few deep breaths. And as you observe your breathing, gradually start to experience yourself in your divine form. A light form. A shining star in the center of your forehead. Stabilize yourself in this state. And see your divine form connected to the supreme power. The almighty power. The almighty power loves me. Now, tell yourself, success is predestined for me. I am in a protective canopy. I am a victorious soul. Success is my birthright. I will be successful in all my endeavors. Now, start to imagine yourself being successful at an initiative or a project or an activity, but see yourself as gaining success. Remember, I am a victorious soul. What is unique about how you achieve the success? Reflect. Reflect on your success 
and that successful moment. What value or quality that is unique to you led to this success? In your mind, allow an image or a feeling, a deep feeling to arise. Take some time to experience this value. What is it like to be in this value? Now, choose another value or quality that helped you achieve success. Again, it's a value or quality that's unique to you. Experience it as deeply as you can. Now, put both these values and qualities into your mind and really hold it. Tune into it. Sense it. Almost hear it. Touch it. Imagine those values going into your whole being. Gradually come back, become aware of your body, start to wriggle your toes and fingers, and when you're ready, open your eyes. Okay, so let's move into the action planning. Um, this is a very critical slide because often we think that it's really, you know, the harder you work, the more you will attain success. But truly, there is more than just working hard. There is, there's so many more things that make you a success, your unique success, investing in yourself, practicing inner work, consistency, the communities around you, the community support that's around you, your strategy, how do you reset your mind, and even aligning with what exactly are you trying to achieve success at? So really, what is your purpose? So having said that, the next part of the exercise is about, as we always do, let's start to reflect and write down on two 
on two things. First, as you were also visualizing your success, or you could take any other successful moment, identify what obstacles typically interfere in you achieving your success and identify the solutions that you may adopt or the habits or some scars that you may have to adopt, which are again, truly unique to you to help remove these obstacles. So this is really personal. Uh, there is no right way. It's what, what is right for you. So take a few minutes to reflect. Uh, I will play some light music and we'll, I'll give you about two minutes and uh, we can get started and then we can share. So with that, hopefully we are ready. I will stop sharing so we can all see each other. And let's start to discuss. I see there's already one sharing in the chat box, but again, this is the time when we just unmute and start discussing. So please feel free to do so. So Prabha uh, says, the obstacle past failures and fears from those failures, which make me hesitant to think positive towards the situation. And the solution is I need to develop courage to digest failure and be more accurate and learn from failure. Yes, courage. I really like that word. Yes, it really does take that. Manoj Bhai, one where you 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 unmute and but he writes the obstacle is ego and the solution is humility and being an instrument. Uh, Arun says the obstacle is waste thoughts and the solution is traffic control. Uh, Rakesh says obstacle is company of negative person. Rakesh, if you could also suggest your own personal solution to overcome that. Right here and unmute. Uh, Nirupa, would you like to share? I see you've unmuted. Uh, yes, I would say lack of confidence, not having knowledge and fear. Very nice. Uh, and affirmation or and changing in my meditation, the um, like uh, I'm full of confidence, nothing new. I have done it before and I have the um, the company of the Almighty as my guide. Wonderful. So just the affirmations in your meditation and this to change of that. Wonderful. Yes. As you said before, what you keep on saying more and whatever you keep on saying comes to you. So I believe in that. Wonderful. 
Um, Arun has responded, he says, uh, in response to his um, obstacles, focus on to focus to get Srimat through concentration and meditation. Wonderful. Eva says communication with stakeholders. Jagdish Bhai says obstacle is self doubts. Nothing will change even if I will do it. It's not worth making such hard efforts for, for it. Very true. Again, my request, if you're listing a, an obstacle, please do, do also state your personal solution. This is all about you. Uh, Anjana says, overthinking about the situation, procrastination, what people will think, lack of confidence. And the solution is be an action taker, believe in self and meditation. Again, Puja Sister, I'm speaking sometimes a little fast, but I hope you're getting that. Uh, Deepak says, the obstacle is waste thoughts and the solution is surrender thoughts. Uh, and then God and drama puts everyone, uh, puts every elevated thought right. Um, okay. Oh, and Rakesh has a solution, remain maximum time in the company of positive attitude people. So the problem was negative people. It's like change the company and be associated with spiritual personality. Very nice. Um, Jitish, his solution is rather than achieving the full goal, make it pieces into smaller achievement. Very nice, so really milestones. So I can measure my progress and without getting worried about failure. Very nice. Eva, her solution is knowing that what the needs are, is it required and select alternatives. So form clear goals, plan and control to benefit all. Very nice. Uh, Nikhil, the obstacle is distractions, solution is concentration and motivation. Very nice, precise, and but really big words. Um, I don't know the person's name, but it lists as values. Obstacle is not focused. Solution is think of a small step you would like to add in your life to help grow. Very nice. Dr. Mehta says obstacles are negative thinking and worried about opinion of others. And uh, Rehna says, obstacle procrastination, solution is determination. Rachna says, care, laziness and carelessness are the obstacles. Solutions are time and tide, wait for none, so value time, very nice. Kiran Bala, waste thoughts. Um, I think that's the problem. And the solution is focusing my, on myself and connecting with the Supreme. Very nice. I see an unmute. Bhakti, would you like to speak? No? Um, anybody else, would you like to speak? I'm happy to yes, read out. Sister. Yes, please go ahead. Vijayavad. Sorry, did I hear Vijayavad? Yes. Please, dear brothers and sisters, accept my greetings of love, peace, and happiness. Obstacles are no obstacles in life, but an opportunity, a step ahead, a way to reach your goal, to reach a success. And success is determination, faith, and love. Faith in God, determination in self, and love in karma that will give you 100% success and God's company in thoughts, speech, and action. God bless you all. Thank you, Vijayabai. As always deep, so certainly not seeing success, failure as failure, and there are three points there. Pujaban, I hope you got that. I see Gita, you've unmuted. Would you like to share? Yes, I'm not able to type for some reason. Uh, so my obstacles are ego, fear of failing, and the memories of past experience of people. Uh, the solution is I have to remind myself what is my purpose and how important it is for me, and then move ahead with courage and believe in yourself and God. Wonderful. Wonderful. 
think we can take a couple more sharings. I have a few more in the chat, but I would still like to pause and see if anybody would like to speak. Gaurav says, uh, obstacles are only your own self. Uh, solution is keep your mind open, meditate, and think clear goals that are practical and not a figment of your imagination. I think this will cure out any obstacles. So very nice. And for our sister Shruti, I think obstacle, of course, is your own self. Right. Focus, meditate, and work for me. Our clear goal, you cannot figment of your imagination. Wonderful. Thank you, Gaurav. I'm glad you shared. Um, I also see another unmute. Mervi, would you like to share? Um, yes. I think uh, for me, it's just the fear of failure. It's like I know what to do. I know what I want to do. I, I, but just really um, trusting God to order my steps into the, you know, the right direction so I don't feel stuck. Like I have it all in my head, but I just feel stuck and not being able to move into the place where I know that, you know, I need to go. So. Right. And, and that seems to be a consistent theme, like fear and getting stuck and just courage. So fear and courage, it seems like it seems to be a recurring theme. Right. Um, so I think at this point we will stop I, unless we can one last and we can recap. Harpreet sister, would you like to speak? I see you unmuted. Yes, uh, so Harpreet good to see you. Yes, thank you, sister. Uh, taking too much on the plate. So sometimes we take so many responsibilities that could be obstacle. And uh, because I've gone through myself and the solution is delegating and having a schedule. Very nice. And I think with that, I will let to your sister. It was a lot to capture. So, like I said, yeah, so. So like I was saying that it seems we have had, uh, this seems to be a consistent theme, past failures and fears, fear from past failures, making me hesitant or hesitate to think positive about this, about the situation. And the solution is really came through a very, very uh, nice. I hope we can all reflect on those, develop courage to digest failure, become more accurate, learn from failure. Ego, again, that's the deeper, uh, you know, the deeper aspect of all of this. So again, humility and thinking of yourself as an instrument, waste thoughts. Uh, so again, traffic control and meditation, the company we keep. So negative people can, can accentuate this. Whereas if we are with more positive and more spiritual personalities, certainly that helps. The lack of confidence, self-doubts, overthinking. And again, waste thoughts, that's the other, seems to be the second recurring theme. And the solutions, again, tremendous meditation, connection, uh, really changing our thought process. So again, prejudged thought, assumption of failure, replace the thought, distraction with concentration, motivation, procrastination with determination, laziness and carelessness, thinking about time. Again, waste thoughts, not serious or casual. So focusing on myself, giving value to the objective, uh, obstacles are really within myself and then again really thinking that there are no obstacles and again ego so again solutions being keeping mind open meditating clear goals smaller goals focus sensitivity and ability to distance myself from cause and effect and again fear of failure like I said keeps coming back and taking on too much but delegating so I think there's a lot for us to reflect. And at this point, I'll hand it over to Manoj Pai to take us forward in the next portion of the, the session. So thank you so much, sister. Uh, and I hope I am audible and clear, right? Yeah, thanks. So uh, thank you so much. All of you are enjoying these values workshops. And you can see there's so much of uh, 
input which you all are giving, so many of your thoughts, and you all also know all the solutions to the obstacles as well. It's just that we need a little bit of power now to implement those solutions into our life. So as usual, uh, before I start, I would just request the participants who have joined new this time to please uh, share your emails or WhatsApp numbers to maybe everyone or to Vidhi's sister. You can see Vidhi's sister as a co-host, so you all can get all the materials in future, all the review materials and the future invitations as well. Uh, so let's move on to what uh, Brother Bridgman Bhai Sahib had shared with us this Monday. Uh, the first four slides are all about uh, the basic principles of success. You know, in Hindi, it is said, uh, Siddhi, sorry, Siddhant Se Siddhi. I mean, if someone is having a life on certain principles, it will lead to success. So let me just come to the first one where the definition of success was very beautifully defined by Bhai Sahib is having an equanimity in all stages of life, not being affected by either criticism or maybe victory as well or failure. So whatever you're doing in your life, it's fine, it's happening and you're happy with it. And there is absolutely not even a little bit of trace that why did this happen? This shows that you're perfectly fi fine off it on the what we call the principle of drama. So I love this definition of success. It has nothing to do with achieving any big accolades in life or having material comforts. It's just something so simple as being economist in all stages. The next principle which I liked is what we call in Hindi is Sankalp Se Siddhi, which means if your thoughts are powerful, sorry for the background music, uh, the background noise rather. So uh, if your thoughts are powerful, a powerful thought can really make you achieve everything in life. And uh, on that day, when we were discussing this, the spiritual class in the morning, which we had, we had the blessing. We normally get a lot of blessings in our daily spiritual classes at Brahma Kumaris, for those who don't know. So that day we got the blessing. You can see the third point that a person if he wants to achieve success, has to have these three virtues, be powerful, knowledgeful, and loveful. So something to very deeply churn on because we have never looked at how can be being loveful make you achieve success. But yes, love is that power. Knowledge is that power which really helps you make successful. And it all starts in the mind. So whatever you think, it's born in the mind first. And then it comes out in your practical. So therefore, Sankalp Se Siddhi. The next principle which we have in life is Vidhi Se Siddhi. We have Vidhi sister with us. I always keep pulling her leg. That Vidhi means method. So Bhai Sahib said that there are three important ingredients for success. Not only the method, but it's also important that you use that method in the proper place and at the proper time, very important. He gave a few examples. I love that example, I'll just share it here. That if you're a big, great singer, and if you suddenly wake up in the middle of the night and start singing, that's not an appropriate time. Same thing, the singer goes to a funeral and starts singing over there, so that's not the appropriate place. So you understand what he tried to say that, though you know the method, but even applying it at the proper time and proper place is important. You can look at this beautiful um, algorithm which is shared by Prabha sister and Pooja sister who do all these PPTs and you can make out what is lost and what is late. We'll be, don't worry, don't be so uh, upset that I'm going very fast. We'll be sending you these in the review material so you can go through that later. Then there's another third principle of success is about determination all of you all have said that as well in the past you all have shared determination is the key to success in hindi dhrta safalta ki chabi hai so to add to this you not only have to be determined but that determination can come into practice if you are disciplined in your lifestyle so that's what is mentioned in that that practice every day those simple simple disciplines what we need to follow for example if i need to lose weight for example i need to really practice that on a daily basis what i'm doing on day one i have to be consistent and persistent otherwise it will just become like a new year resolution and it will just fizzle out later so it has to be with determination no doubt but discipline on a regular basis 
very beautiful bhai sahab said these three things to avoid first is parchintan uh, it's a hindi word sorry it means thinking or speaking about others stop looking at other people beautiful thing is be original don't be a copy paste if you want to be successful he said don't do negative happiness that is being stop being a sadist at someone for example my neighbor or my colleague in the profession is achieving something and looking at his success i am not happy that's negative happiness no because i remember this beautiful statement suddenly out of the blue here sister shivani once shared this about success in one of her talks that if i am not liking the success of any other person which means i am unhappy with success and obviously success will never come back to me because i am unhappy so it's important that we should be happy with the successes of other people as well and very important is whenever we do anything we are successful it is basically a team work like today's ice breaker also beautifully all the facilitators gave their contributions and all these workshops or values for life series whatever we are doing is not only because of some one person's contribution it's a team work so never i should get that feeling oh i am doing it no it's god is getting it done through his appropriate instruments and once we do this all of us can enjoy the success and jealousy will just vanish it won't be there at all i just uh, already pointed out that jealousy is another emotion which i have seen not only in lokic life lokic means the professional life which we are leading but also in our spiritual life sometimes when i do some service at some center and when some other brother other brother does it at another center i try to compare subtly with that brother why so this is coming in the questions that comparison and competition the more you start comparing yourself the more you go in that competitive mode and once you are in these two seas comparison and competition you tend to invariably overlap and go into the uh, criticism mode so you know all this when you start doing jealousy creeps in so i mean actually we must say in the spiritual consciousness there's nothing called jealousy because everyone is performing their own part so why should i be jealous of anyone and here bhai sahab gave the beautiful example of uh, the founder of brahma kumaris who's brahma baba he beautifully used to say that he is a servant mind well uh, the the people abroad don't like this word servant they say they fret oh i must i'm not a servant so it has been modified for the westerners it is they are said to be servers so server is a slightly polished way of saying that i am doing service but even the supreme teacher what we say is the incorporeal god who gives us who gives his teachings here in the spiritual class daily he says that i am your most obedient servant and that's what we should imbibe from those teachings uh, let me just go further in the question and before i go into the question and answers uh, brijman bhai sahab said that remind yourself that you are an instrument of god all the time you may be the doer but it is the god it is god who is getting things done from you so in hindi we call it karan karavan har so karan har means i am doing it but karavan har is the great almighty who's getting it done to me beautiful questions we'll see how much i can cover in the next 5 minutes again these two things that comparison and competition was asked to bhai sahab how can i stay away from this so the simple solution to this is as he mentioned avoid cross talk don't think about other people don't talk about other people because if you are in a superiority or inferiority complex if you are in a superiority complex you will be very complacent and you look down upon other people and whereas if you are in a inferiority complex you feel disheartened with your effort a doctor asking in the icu when i am not successful in saving the life of a patient i feel very demotivated and i want to quit the profession so how do i deal with that so bhai sahab beautifully said that remember death is just uh, another consequence in life it is not in my hands there are many factors responsible for a death of a person and the doctor and the patient relation is relationship is just one of them so overcome the guilt you did your best you tried but that didn't work out so be detached in spiritual life i think i've covered this can there be jealousy and competitiveness yes everyone goes through certain stages so as i move ahead the more it's said that the more you go ahead in any of your uh, 
backgrounds, either it's a spiritual or your professional background. A person who is highly successful is highly humble as well. An example of a mango tree. The more the tree bears a lot of mangoes, the more it is sort of ready to bow down. How do I deal with people who expect favors from me if I'm successful? So remember, you have to be very careful of the company you keep. That's what he said in, uh, it's said here in, again in Hindi that Sangh ka rang lagta hai. So just be very careful of your company. Don't get just flattered by what people are telling you and beware of uh, what their motives are. Even though I'm successful and have all material comforts, but I feel empty inside. I'm sure all of you will have a quick answer. It's lack of spirituality. And we all came out with beautiful definitions in the starting. Sorry, I had missed that. I was in some other webinar today. I couldn't join at that point of time. But the result of success is you should be happy all the time because it's you're doing things to be successful. Why? Because you want happiness at the end. But at the end, if you're not having happiness, it shows there's a lack of spirituality. Then it was my question, I asked him, what is the difference between success and victory? So he mentioned that victorious is Vijay over all small, small weaknesses or vices which we have. And the combined conglomeration or the total effect of all the victories is success. So success is thought to be the end product of so many victories. Uh, Bhai Sahib always mentions this beautiful word in Hindi, it is safal. Safal means seh fal. So every action of mine is always with a fruit. We say each action has an equal and opposite reaction. So I, I am safal or I am successful if my every action is bearing some fruit. And that action should be a fruitful action. Without a fruit, there is no such action. So it has to be a fruitful action. And lastly, it was a question about <clears throat> in the IT sector, everyone wants instant success. They are given a lot of incentives and they frequently change jobs. So best is try to understand that uh, when they are giving you a very fat pay package, they are expecting something from you. So choose between the standard of life and standard of living. I leave it up to you all to understand this. And Vaisa beautifully mentioned that uh, what is durability and what is perishability? So you can understand. Therefore, 30, 40 years ago, people used to retire from their jobs from the same place. Whereas now it's like every one year you want something fast, instant success, but that is very short lived. I'll not cover this question in the interest of time. Uh, you all will get be getting this later. So we have with us a very respected sister Gayatri. And before I pass it on to her, First of all, let me tell you, um, it's amazing that I just emailed her and she just at the click of one email, she was ready to take with us the session. And uh, let me just introduce her to you all. The Brahma Kumari students who are here know very well about her, but there are a few new people who have joined. So Sister Gayatri, I'll just introduce you in short. Sister Gayatri, basically, uh, it reminds me of Guyana days because she was born in Guyana and born in a very respectable family. Her father was Steve Narayan. Uh, he was famous in the Brahma Kumaris as uncle. There was only one uncle that time. So Uncle Steve we used to call and the incorporeal God Shiv Baba used to really call him as uncle. And uh, I mean, I'm in awe of uh, Steve Narayan because he was the vice president of Guyana and he was the person who came into knowledge first. And then Sister Gayatri and the entire family came into it. So she's been practicing Raj Yoga meditation over the last 40 years now. Very important, her contribution is since 1980, she served as the representative of the Brahma Kumaris at the United Nations in New York. And uh, she'll be joining us again next time as well uh, when we have the next workshop. So half of her introduction, I'll save it for that time. But what does she do at UN now is she's looking at these five P's of the sustainable development goals. So what are these five P's just to give you a glimpse? It's peace, people, planet, prosperity, and partnership. So these are the broad landscapes which are set which she's looking at in the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal Program, which she is engaged over there in. Uh, 
and she serves as the vice chair also to the International Day of Yoga Committee at the United Nations. All of you know they have the International Day of Yoga on the 21st of June since many years. Our Honorable Prime Minister got it since I think it's 2014, seven years from now. She's also written a few books and has many articles and I'll cover the other uh, accolades of her in the next talk. And as usual, I'll just recite a poem, Sister, for you. Uh, we have with her Sister Gayatri, who's the Vice Chair, and with Almighty's inheritance, she's the heir. Listening to her today on success, it's indeed fair that our speed should be like an active hair, not a passive one. So it's indeed fair that we should be like an active hair, breathing in the fresh, unpolluted air, and indeed making the most of our ticket fair, right? We all have a got ticket to go to the heaven. Next is she represents the BKs at the United Nation dispelling this prevalent myth and notion, United Nations and the notion that, what is the notion? That life is all about competition and commotion. She says, let's pause for a while and strengthen our connection, empower ourselves with the divine energy and then set into motion for our daily life. Let's start our day with this beautiful annotation and make the Almighty a connotation. And lastly, a few words on the virtue or value of success, which she'll be talking today about. Success is first born in the mind. These thoughts then attract their kind, which push defeat and failure to the hind and help build a new future for the entire mankind. So success is all in the mind. Therefore, it's we say Sankalp Se Siddhi. These thoughts attract their kind, push defeat and failure to the hind, and this helps to bring a new future for the entire mankind. So thank you so much, Gayatri sister, once again for joining on time. And uh, over to you. Thank you. So thank you all. Thank you, Manoj Bhai. But thank you, everyone else, for being here today. And thank you for that beautiful poem. Um, I have been introduced before in many different ways, but I don't think I've been introduced ever through poetic language. So thank you very much for that. I was in South Africa once and um, I, I was called up to speak. And as no, it was in South Africa, actually, it was Lima, Peru. And as I went up to the podium to speak, um, they asked me to um, to pause for a moment because they wanted to introduce me and it was the song by the South African group Desert Rose and they recited the Gayatri Mantra. Now that you would have to top because next week maybe that's how you'd like to introduce me. <laughs> Not that I have claims on the Gayatri Mantra but I love it. I'm here today to uh, share with you some of my insights on the subject of success. Now, I know that it's still Saturday evening for you, but tomorrow morning in the versions of the Brahma Kumaris that we call the Murli, Baba is talking about success. And so I said, well, whose yoga of intellect was so clear that they knew exactly the topic to choose on Saturday because Baba will expand on it on Sunday. So brilliant, whoever chose the subject for today. I would give you 101% on your yoga, your connection. So I want to take up seeing that I had the opportunity to read that Murli because I was told it was on success. I want to take up success um, at the level of being a Siddhi. You know, Sister Mohini, who is our senior sister here in the Americas, she always says that Siddhi is a word that is translated as success, but actually it's more than success. It is accomplishment. And so I'll begin with the last words of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, whom most of you being in the IT world would know who he is, and I use all his products, which is Apple. Um, 
he actually was a very innovative person and his innovation actually came to a large extent from his spiritual life. And so they said that at the end of his life, after accomplishing so much um, under the uh, keyword apple, his loved ones surround him. And of course he died of pancreatic cancer. And so his loved ones surrounded him. And as he looked at them all, out came the words, wow, wow, wow. Those three, he repeated it. And so I said, you know, for the end of the day, after doing so much and getting such success, in the world and um, you know, in what he has done and what he stood for to exit with the words, wow, wow, wow. I would say the Siddhi, the spiritual meaning of success is actually wow, because it is not just a success in which he made money and he made um, technology so easy for all of us to use, but what he did was, I suppose he left with an accomplishment that went beyond just the physical aspect or the material aspect of his success. So I think that's what Siddhi is all about. It's that, wow, I accomplished something. And so for me in exploring these uh, spiritual keys to um, success, um, I would first of all like to position success in the way that um, Baba, um, our founder, the one who gives us our murli, our daily spiritual food, as it were, our daily spiritual nourishment, he positioned success not in the mind. Siddhi is not something of the mind, but Siddhi is something in the subconscious. And within the subconscious, if I were to look at success, I will see it as a birthright. So long before I can think, long before I, the soul, begin to think, success is embedded in me. It's a birthright. And so it means then that if success is my birthright, success is something innate as a spiritual birthright, just like how freedom is a right, of the human being. No one gives me my freedom. Freedom is from, for instance, fear. If I am free from fear, then that's a freedom. But it's the same thing. Uh, success is a spiritual birthright. No one actually gives it to me. It's intrinsic within me, nor um, I, I express it through um, being with, uh, engaging with my spiritual world, um, engaging with my material world. And so there is an engagement that takes place, but it is intrinsic. It's innate within me. It's a birthright. And so if it's a birthright, just like with every other rights, I'm entitled to it. And so I need to know how to use it. Now, I just want to check in. Manoj Bhai, am I being translated into other languages? Am I going too fast? Uh, no, sorry. We don't have translation facilities. So you're not fast. Okay, That's all right. right. Okay. So it means then that that which is intrinsic within me moves through a certain, I call it spiritual trajectory or a spiritual process to be given expression. So it is that, that innate uh, success, which is my birthright, would then move through a spiritual trajectory or a spiritual process and would then enter into the world as an expression. So what is this spiritual trajectory or this spiritual process that um, my birthright of success will move through or the Siddhi would be given expression? And that is, I would call it from awareness to action. So the trajectory, the spiritual trajectory, the spiritual movement, would be awareness, attitude, vision, and action. So that will be the wave or the movement of moving a birthright into an expression. And so it would then be the actions that I do 
would require me, if I'm moving it in the opposite direction, the action, which is the expression, would require me to have faith in something that is intrinsic within me in order to make that action an accomplished action, which people call a success. So the faith I would have before I actually do the action or before I even have an awareness of the quality of action I would want is to have faith in what is intrinsic within me, which is my spiritual birthright of success. So I ask you the question uh, in terms of a visual, if I were to look at the constellation um, of God's constellation and me being a star in that constellation, what kind of a star would I like to see myself as? Would it be just a twinkling star? Would it be a lucky star? Or would it be a successful star? Now, here I want to make a distinction between luck and success. I said to you that success is a spiritual birthright and I'm saying um, luck is different to success. Luck is dependent on external factors. Success is intrinsic. By the nature of the soul, the intrinsic nature of the soul, the intrinsic way that the soul is constituted is to bring success. And this is why the practice of the Brahma Kumaris is one that we have to master, and that is to being soul conscious. The moment I'm soul conscious, I activate that spiritual birthright of success. Luck may be the, my karmic accounts, the, the, um, the circumstances, the situation, the people, the whatever will be the external factors would then um, bring me that luck. And so I just want to make that distinction here. So I'm today exploring uh, success as a spiritual phenomenon. And I'm asking you to recognize this success as a process and success not as an outcome. And the process is this movement along the lines of the spiritual trajectory that I just explained to you. And um, to look at this movement from success to seva. Now, Manoj said that um, in the West, we don't like the word servant, but actually we don't use the word servant, but what we do use is servant leadership. Long ago, there used to be this servant leadership and servant leadership meant that someone who served with seva bhav, they were serving from, um, that, uh, that deep within them, that bhavana, those pure feelings that they wanted to um, give back to their community something. So the word servant leadership or the coming from seva bhav is coming from the heart of spiritual service. And that is something that I want to give back. And in that giving back, there was a certain success that it showed of the individual doing that. And that success was one of being a charitable person, being a philanthropist, being an altruistic server. And so that the spiritual tra trajectory of success could be seen from moving from that altruistic space within us or that philanthropist space within us or that save above space within us to the action or the service that we do. But of course, it has to come through the movement of the trajectory, which is awareness, attitude, vision, and action. So I think that um, before I open it up now to how success is played out in our lives, I'd like to say that from the world I come, which is here in the Western world, there are two values that I think are very much um, owned by individuals and by communities. Um, and that is the values of success 
and the values of freedom. Now, both these values are connected to rights. I've just talked to you about uh, spiritual uh, success being a spiritual birthright, but even freedom, freedom within the human rights uh, declaration states that um, that declaration states that all human beings are born free and equal. They are endowed with reason and conscience. So within this, if you notice, it's a political statement, it's in the human rights declaration, but it is heavily um, leaning on this spiritual um, ground. And that is true freedom means that all human beings are born free and equal. They be, why they are born free and equal? Because all human beings are endowed with reason and conscience. And that is what gives us our freedom. And so I think that um, it's the same with success. We are all born um, with that success, but how do we give it expression? I think is where, as they say, the rubber hits the road. It's where it, it's subject to the individual's recognition of this. So success is a process of uncovering what this Siddhi is, what this um, birthright is, and it is not an outcome. It is not dependent on other people giving me my success. I am the one who got to express that success. And so let us look at some of the things that um, from a spiritual perspective, um, I, Gayatri, me, and I'm sharing now from a, a personal perspective of how I began to look at success in relation to my own life. Now, um, I took knowledge, as you heard, in a very small country called Guyana, but the country was small. My education was in England. I did, um, my college was in England and uh, I was in high school and primary school under the British educational system. So I continued at college level with the British educational system. So even though I was born in a small country, I was exposed to a larger country when it came to my education, but I was also exposed to a political system because of my father being, as you heard, a minister and then the vice president. But when I came to Baba, when I came on a spiritual path, my first field of service was at the United Nations. That's where I began to serve. And so even for the spiritual part of my life, it was in this international forum. It was in a highly political and legal and technical forum. And then I had to bring spirituality into the secular domain of the UN. And then I had to serve. And so I had to do a lot of work on myself in order to be accomplished. And I would use this word success as the wow of Steve Jobs as being accomplished doing something in which it made me feel accomplished. And as I felt accomplished, I knew that I was successful. And so how did I do that? So the first thing I had to do was to realign my life to follow this path. So what do I mean by that? I realized that um, spirituality was of course connected to inner development and inner growth but it also had to be um, consistent with what it is I was engaging with at the UN. And so in order to learn the UN system and to become successful there as a server within the UN system, what was I aligning to within myself to create that success? And what I was, the first thing I had to do was to have faith in myself the faith that I was the right instrument to do this and not live in the doubt of maybe someone else can do it better than I can. Why me? Why was I put there? Because literally I was put there by default. I did all the paperwork to get us the accreditation and then there was no one to represent us. So by default, I became the person. So I had to have that faith in myself. So I think the first thing in success is to align your life to follow 
an inner path that would be consistent with what it is you want to do, the, the service you want to do in the world, the actions you want to do to accomplish your goals. And so at that time, I had no role model. So I had to do this by looking to emerge what was true within my own self, because I had nowhere to look or no one to look for a successful personality from the BKs because no one was at the UN and in order to duplicate them, how they did it at the UN, because there was no one to do that. And so I had to do much of that work. So the first thing I think that is important for us when we're looking at accomplishment and looking at success is to realign our life, to follow an inner path that is consistent with our outer goals or the outer world that we are living in or whatever your career. Um, I think what I learned from this was that um, I therefore never allowed personalities or society to determine for me what success is. Um, and I also never went chasing after goals just because others accomplished them because I realized that maybe just chasing after others um, may not be the goals that I hold dear or I uphold for myself. So I realized that success wasn't something that I went in pursuit of, but success emerged out of me when I started to align my life to this purpose. And so I was giving myself the inner space for my success to show itself to me because I know that external aspirations would not guarantee my happiness. And if I don't have happiness in terms of an accomplishment of sorts, then that is not success. Uh, the, the thing that I would do um, uh, over and over as a practice um, in aligning, realigning my life to an inner path is that I would keep asking myself, and I would like you to do this as well. I, would, I had to do it and I keep doing it. And it's a reflective inquiry. And that reflective inquiry for me is what really does success mean to me? And if there was one spiritual principle that I would associate with the meaning of success, what would that spiritual principle be? And for me, the spiritual principle was radical success. I call it brutal, uh, sorry, brutal honesty. I call it radical honesty. It required for me being very honest with myself. And so what does being honest with myself, where did that take me? And that is knowing myself. I think it's very, very important, even though Baba keeps asking us the question, who am I? And he keeps telling us who we are, are we spending time to discover the number one success in our lives? And that is to truly know myself as I am. In other words, as Socrates said, to if you haven't actually looked at the unexamined life, you haven't actually lived. So his quote is, the unexamined life, if not looked at, is not worth living if you are not prepared to do that. And so this to me is the number one success, learning how to be who I am. And so um, in doing that, in cultivating the self-awareness, this is the first point of the trajectory. What is this awareness that I am cultivating that is connected to the intrinsic success, that is my birthright. And so, you know, I hear a lot of talks and I hear a lot of emphasis on thought and I hear a lot of emphasis on changing the mindset. And I hear a lot of emphasis on, um, you know, on, on energy. Uh, however, I want to position awareness as a whole. The soul is a whole being. The soul is not a fragmented being. I, the soul, I'm light and might. And the light of, and might is not just quantum physics energy. 
but the light and might is life. And I think it goes beyond energy. You may call it metaphysical, but it is life. And it cannot be measured. It, quant it cannot be quantified, but it is a whole being. So when I'm in the awareness of something, I'm in the awareness of my whole being, not just in my mind or not just in my intellect or not just in my sanskaras, but I'm in the awareness of this Shakti, the superpower of Shakti. And it is a whole being, and I, the whole being of the soul, I can think, you may call it the mind, I can understand, you call it intellect, I have a personality, it's called the sanskaras. Now, the whole being is what is called the catalyst for change. So I'm in awareness of that. Now, we are all told that in the world, the most successful people in the world are highly self-aware. So if I want to be a highly successful person, I need to look at what self-awareness is. And what does that mean to me? Is it that my mind, my thought is self-aware or is it my whole being? I'm aware of who I am. And so I think that um, to reflect on this self-awareness as a whole being is very important to connect me to my intrinsic um, uh, success as a city. Now, why is it important for me to be self-aware in order to be successful? And the reason for that is because the more I do that, I am redefining a vision of my own self. I, if I don't become self-aware, then I'm still living on the, with a lot of illusions. It's called Maya. I'm still living and falling prey to the many biases, the many prejudices that are clouding my judgment, the many layers of identities that others have told me about myself. And so I, even in success, I'm trying to live up to other people's expectations of me. I'm trying to live up to the system's um, demands of me. I'm trying to make the money um, to be um, valued as economically sound. I'm trying to accumulate the material possessions that would determine success in the eyes of the world. I'm still falling prey to all of those biases and prejudices and conditions and expectations. But to, to be in self-awareness is to see myself as I really am outside of all of those um, props that, um, that I'm looking through to measure my success. Now, I'm not going to measure my success based on a quantifiable um, matrix, but I'm going to measure my success on a um, quantitative, you know, I, in a qualitative, sorry, in a qualitative way. And so I need to do self-reflection for that. So self in this um, thing of, of looking at myself to really connect my, myself to this city of success, I'd be looking at both, I'd be balanced. I wouldn't be um, naive. So my self-awareness would mean I'd be looking at my strengths, I'd be looking at my weaknesses. I would know what really matters to me and what doesn't matter to me. I will be acknowledging my feelings. I wouldn't be ignoring or suppressing them. I will be looking at my thought patterns, not just at the manifestation of thoughts, but it will be what are the patterns that are forming them. I'll be valuing my time and I'll be using my time in a worthwhile way. I'll be uncovering my blind spots things that I can't see. I'm just seeing through silos or I'm just living in a box and seeing it through a box. And I will let go of external pressures that are suppressing me to think, to feel, and to be in a certain way. They're actually suppressing my awareness. So to break through those things, my awareness has got to be in a different domain. Now, what does self-awareness bring for me is clarity. Now, self-awareness brings a clarity and that clarity is called power. So I have the power of clarity that then gives me a focus. We all know that when we want success in life, we need the clarity, but we also need the focus. And this clarity that comes just doesn't come from the mind 
filtering information through the senses with the world, external world as a catalyst, but it is the, it is the soul knowing what the subconscious is telling the soul it needs to do. Now, you may call that your intuition, but it is coming from the depth, which Baba refers to as your original or eternal self. It's coming from an authenticity. It's coming from a truth within. So then the clarity that comes from that um, makes us successful because the clarity will show us what it is I want. What it is I want in life. Now, once I know this is what I want in life, it is only then I can create a goal. And in the creation of that goal, the clarity and the focus will give me the power to achieve that goal. Now, have you ever asked yourself, how do you create goals in life? Where would goals, the creation of goals come from? And what gives you the power to achieve those goals? So I think that um, if someone, if I were to ask you now, what is the goal in your life? Go into the awareness of your subconscious and let it emerge and articulate it with, to me. Then you will say, yeah, I need some time to reflect. As opposed to me saying to you, what are the goals in your life? And you start constructing it with your thoughts. You start making it up in the moment. So this is what I'm talking about. Your sub, let it emerge from within you. Let your goal emerge within you because um, clar that kind of clarity of goal would lead you to a focus. And when there is a focus, the focus will see the target with precision. Now, this was Arjuna's life. This is what made Arjuna the master archery. He had a clarity with a focus. The focus gave him precision and the precision, he hit that target every time. And so I think that for me here, it's for us to ask ourselves, like Steve Jobs um, was asked at the end, those words, I love them, wow, wow, wow. How would I like to be remembered if I was a successful person? How would I like to be remembered? Would I like to be remembered through my eulogy values or through my resume values? Usually when we are applying for a job or as you heard, um, and I hope Manuj never does it, talk about accolades. Accolades are usually resume values. It's what I want people to know about me based on what is measurable, what is quantifiable. But at the end of the day, when I'm dead and gone, and I no longer have control over my resume values, it's in the hands of other people to talk about me. And those are called eulogy values. So I think in clarifying the core of what creates the goals in our lives, which is the core of my own values, the values that I am most comfortable with, I must also look at the eulogy values. I must look at those, wow, wow, wow. At the end of the day, who am I left with? Only the people I love. I wasn't left with an Apple computer in my lap or as an iPhone in my hand. I was left with these people I love. So what are those eulogy values that would emerge from your subconscious to help you set goals to make you a successful being? And I think that these core values to you, are it's important for you to recognize your core values because they tell you what seem right to you. These core values are not things that you should do because your parents or your society or your government tell you is right for you. Because it is not enough to say that you value success, but it is very important for you to articulate through the way you live your life what success means to you. And it is these core values when you recognize them within you that would create a frame, a subtle framework within you that would give me, make you make sense and meaning out of the, the yeah. connection to your core values, to your, um, to your success. And so I think once you have identified these core values, then 
you make effort to bring them into your personal lives. This is what we refer to as, dhar as dharna. What are the values I'm inculcating not to save me from other people's um, uh, you know, negativity, but how it is that it would set goals in my life to be of service to the world? And how is it that I serve to, as an accomplished person, spiritually accomplished, to bring success to other people's lives as well? in my personal life, in my relationships, in my work life, and in my service to the community. So I would say that uh, that is the awareness and very quickly, because I have a few minutes, is I also have to look at my attitude. I went a lot of, into details of the awareness because that's foundational to the success. But then filtering from the awareness, it comes through my attitude. And the attitude is the middle ground between the awareness and the action. So, you know, from the moment I wake up in the morning, my attitude tells me what mood I'll be in for the rest of the day. So there's this beautiful thing. If I put my clock to alarm for 3.30 or a quarter to four, we get up at four o'clock. And I turn around and I press the snooze button. What's that attitude? What is the attitude telling me? That I don't want to get up. I don't want to do that. I just want to sleep some more. So it's a kind of a lethargic attitude that would make me do that, as opposed to you know, jumping out of bed and saying, yes, I want to be on time for my four o'clock because I want to talk to God about something, or I want clarity of something that I'm grappling with, that enthusiasm isn't there. So the attitude is between, I may have the awareness before I went to bed to sleep, to sleep that I want to get up at this time, but then the attitude kicks in um, with a, a laziness um, and make me do that. So I think that um, Attitude is something very important for us to look at because throughout the whole day, we may have the right awareness, we may have a determination to do the right action, but there is a leakage in my attitude and a leakage could be with the many different types of doubts. Now, prejudices, biases, um, and faulty and false beliefs actually live in my attitude. And these things collectively, what they do is that they cloud my judgment. They cloud the intellect for making the right judgments. And so I need to, what I call as a dignity of choice. I need to choose with dignity um, thing, things about my attitude that I need adjusting. Now, attitude is something that's very subtle and it shows up in the way we discriminate against others in the way we treat people, in my attitude speaks long before my words. My attitude is, um, is felt long before I even act. So that is something I think that stands in the way of our success and we must take a look at it because attitude determines our behavior. And the way to deal with attitude is to set daily intents that are pure and clean that would dramatically adjust my attitude. Because I know if I don't ask myself the question, if I say a word that was derogatory, um, the question, did I just discriminate against someone? And then check my attitude, then my behavior will become entrenched in discrimination and discrimination is a very big injustice in our daily behaviors with one another. So we have to look at that in terms of attitude because it, um, what it does, it removes the success in relationships with others. And um, I have to look at that. And then I would say vision. You know, successful people are visionaries. Successful people have a vision of who they are and of what they want. And the thing about being spiritual, when we are told, you know, have a vision of yourself as a deity. And what you want to do is to create a world of deities. So we have a vision of who we are, who we want to be, 
and we also have a vision of what we want to do. But the encouragement here is something that I think is very important for success. And that is, and if you have a clear vision of the potential within you to be something, then in envisioning that, you actually become it. You have the conviction that this is who you are already. And that conviction of I have the potential within me, so this is who I am already, gives you a, a movement, gives you a conviction to move it into reality. If you don't have the inner conviction that you have the potential to be that, then what you want is not going to become a reality. So this thing about vision is to see what's inside of you as a potential, emerge that potential, and then work toward an outer reality from reaffirming the faith that there is a potential for you inside of you to make an external reality possible. For this, you may need to raise the standards. Once you discover the potential, you will have to raise standards. Um, and the standards would be seen in terms of how you use your time, of how uh, learning, you see, a success is a lifelong learning path. And it requires consistency in that learning. So I would say to you, fall in love with consistency. It's called self-discipline. I must be disciplined. If I want to raise my standards, I have to also be disciplined to keep the standards, keep the bar high. Some other things about visioning is that you, always, you should always be curious about things. You know, when you walk into nature, how do you learn naturally? Is that if you see something, uh, you know, an ant um, building, uh, you know, an ant's nest, how do they do this? How do I learn from my natural world? So be curious, never stop being curious about things because curiosity um, deepen understanding. Another thing about envisioning is never be so uh, stuck on, on things that you don't allow for flexibility. You know, even on a spiritual path, um, there may be traditional ways of doing things that we get stuck on and they're not working for me. So I need to be flexible to see how even in following the Mariadas, in following certain codes that I'm, in, I'm asked to follow, how can I allow for a kind of an openness and allow a flexibility that would keep me engaged. And once the engagement with the flexibility, they are upholding the goals that I have the conviction to make into reality. And finally, I would say that um, uh, successful people are always humble people. They always learn from others. Um, they're always willing to listen to others with an open mind. And because the thing I found out about listening to say people at the UN so that I would learn the UN system is that I had to have an open mind. I couldn't think that they were different from me or I was different from them. I couldn't even think the secular world was different from the spiritual world because what am I working with a duality here? I had to look for integration. And I found that listening became a very important um, aspect for me. And that is because it removed my blind spots. If I listen as with an inferiority complex or a superiority complex, that in itself is a blind spot and I will never hear. So, uh, you know, to be humble, I think, as a, in, in the name of success is really uh, a successful person knows that realizes actually not even know, they realize that they don't know everything and that they are willing to learn more. A successful person would also learn from their mistakes. And they know that from learning from their mistakes, they will grow faster. A successful person would see the whole and will never just look at the parts. And I think finally, a successful person will celebrate success. And the success is they would praise their lives for the small accomplishments that they have, they will make their own life into their coach. They wouldn't go seeking a life coach from others. They may be inspired from, by others, but a successful person will make their own life their coach. 
a successful person would, would always have um, the awareness that there's nothing like a failure. What they see as a failure is really a feedback for them. It, it feeds back something to them that they wouldn't have seen or wouldn't have noticed. And I think that finally a successful person learns through practice and for practice for me, it's bringing this principle that success is my birthright into living it out in the world through its expression and practice is that curve in between that would include awareness, attitude, vision and action. So that's it for me. And um, I hope that it made sense and it made some kind of meaning to you because this is what success for me is all about. And um, this is how I've been living my life. And I would call it successful. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much. We wanted you to just go on and on, but fantastic you shared about how the spiritual trajectory, starting with the attitude, what we say Smriti in Hindi, sorry, the awareness first, the attitude, the vision, and then finally the action. And uh, fantastic, uh, I just liked one word also, it's very really simple, that success is not the end point, it's a process, and it starts inside the subconscious, as you rightly mentioned. So there's a very uh, interesting question that, uh, can you please ask Sister Gayatri, that she didn't, since she didn't have a role model, what steps did you take in your routine or in your recipe and kept tweaking on it en route? Um, I'm assuming that most of you online here are Brahmins, are BKs? Uh, not many, I mean, majority are, yeah. Okay, so um, I, okay, well, I'll talk as though I'm talking to the minority. Um, I, um, I started studying with the Brahma Kumaris, and um, I ended up as one of the first representatives of the UN. Um, and so I didn't have a role model. And, but what I did have was a community of brothers and sisters who were willing to listen to me and who were willing to um, offer me um, spiritual life skills for me to apply to first and foremost my own life, and then to um, be available for me to talk through what was going on. And you know what that taught me on a spiritual path? That no man or woman is an island. That we cannot grow in isolation of others. We cannot learn in isolation of others. So I felt I was caught. I was walking a path with two support systems. One was the United Nations community and one was the Brahma Kumaris community. And so I, this was where I learned humility at a very different level because I didn't know how the UN worked as an international forum of member states. And I was just beginning to learn about how the Brahma Kumaris serve as an international organization um, on the field of service like the UN. And I was the person walking it. And so I think that um, I learned from both. And this is why I love the landscapes that of the five Ps that you heard about um, in the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, I learned about how to integrate the secular with the spiritual. And without the secular, you couldn't um, uh, you couldn't bring spiritual principles into what are you bringing it? You're bringing it into your secular life, you're bringing it into the secular world, and you're seeing where the principles got violated. So I didn't have a role model, but what I did have was a process to learn from. And this process included people, their experiences, and their ability to help mold and shape a path that we were walking together. And so it was a collective learning and it was um, a cooperative venture. It was a cooperative endeavor. And that's how I learned. 
And so that is why today, um, and it's not a point of ego for me, it may be a point of contention, but I don't use any singular person as a role model and say that this person knows it all. And so this person could help me lead my life. Because even when I was working with the daddies, for instance, Daddy Janki would take would tell me to do it this way. Daddy Gulzar would tell me to do it this way. Daddy Prakashmani would tell me to do it this way. Brother Jagdish would say, try it this way. Brother Ramesh would say, Brother Nerwe, Brother Bridge Mohan. And then I would take it all and say, okay, make sense and meaning, and then feedback to them. Is this what you all would like me to do? And then they would say, yes, do it this way. So I had to kind of bring together all their ideas, put it together, and then feed it right back to them and say, is this what you want me to do? So they all approve that. And then I find that's the best way for me to learn, because then if Daddy Golzar were to say, you go and do this, and it didn't turn out right, then I'll blame her and say, Daddy, you told me to do that. And, you know, what is right, what is wrong? That's not success either. But um, I would still say, but I followed one person, but when it's a collective, um, I think it is nicer and it is more beautiful in that way because you learn different perspectives and then you begin to, to what I call it, um, you accumulate the collective wisdom of the Brahma Kumaris and offer it to the UN. Fantastic, wonderful. Brother is asking in one word, what is the wow of your life? What is the wow? The wow of my life is speaking to all of you today and most of you have your cameras off. So the wow of my life is to see um, Ashok Bhai and to see his beautiful smile. The wow of my life to see your faces. Yeah, in other words, the wow of my life is always something new. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, time is just short all the time. So let me just invite Dr. Ashok Mehta. You've already spoken about him. And Dr. Ashok Mehta to propose the vote of thanks for the talk. Over to you, Dr. Mehta. Let me say something to Dr. Ashok Mehta before he speaks. You never grow old. You are always the same. So you must have a secret doctor that you could reveal to us today to be ever young and to be ever healthy. This is one thing I have never understood myself. <laughs> I think I just lived my life as, as a simple individual. I've enjoyed my surgery. I've enjoyed looking at my patients. And my wife has always looked after me. Otherwise, my life was very erratic, working long hours, operating long hours. But I suppose, I think Baba has helped me a lot in the last 30 years or 35 years, whatever time I'm here since say, 1988. I enjoyed Gayatri Benstock. I don't think one can have such a beautiful talk to bring in the complete Baba's knowledge into life and assess success in that way. Gayatri, when I've seen her at the United Nations almost 25 years back, and it's such a pleasure. I went during the lunch hour and there were at least half a dozen diplomats in our office and they were all enjoying Brahma Bhojan or whatever, Prasad, you want to call it. But I think that was a big secret which I learned to make everyone, especially those secular group of people from all over the world to be happy, to share with them the lovingly the small gifts from Baba. I think uh, it's been such a beautiful thing. I've always loved Steve Uncle, Auntie, and it's, a, it's such a pleasure to see Gayatri Ben taking a big, big jump from Brahma Kumaris into the United Nations and bringing United Nations to Brahma Kumaris. Because I think whatever we achieved with the United Nations or Brahma Kumaris, whether it was living values, whether daddy going to United Nations, and so many things that happen. I think a uh, lot of it is Baba work through Gayatri Ben. Thank you, Gayatri Ben, for sharing those beautiful thoughts and uh, enlightening us. I think I would like to listen to your lecture again on the video, because I think it's so beautiful. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you very much. And give my love to your whole family. They're very special.
questions. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, Mrs. Mehta was sitting in the background, but now she can't be seen. But anyway, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And Sister Claudia also has joined us from Vancouver. So maybe you can also say a quick word. Sister Claudia, yeah. Jyoti Gayatri Ben, it is very nice to hear you this morning. I quite uh, enjoy your talk, and I'm sure that's going to be a, a very good for everyone who was here, including me as well, to hear you talk. So thank you for being with us this morning, and and thank you for being who you are. Thank you, Claudia. So thank you so much, uh, both of you. And uh, let me just quickly share the screen for all of you and tell you our upcoming events. And actually, I don't know. It's some internet is playing some. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah. Yes, you are. Yeah. It's just saying the host muted you. I don't know why that's showing up. Sorry. Yeah. So Sister Gayatri already um, showed you all the surprise that tomorrow, if you all happen to, or rather I must say, I would recommend you all to go on the online uh, spiritual class we have in the morning. It's the Murli class. I'm speaking about Sunday Murli, which Sister Gayatri already referred to. It's a spiritual class in the morning, which we have. So it's recommended that you can go and visit your center or online as well. Nowadays, online is the in thing. So uh, I'll just tell you that it's like really amazing because uh, when we selected the success value, we never knew that the Sunday coming after this Saturday would be the entire spiritual class on that. So it is, as Sister Gayatri mentioned, it's the Murli is all about Safalta Ke Sitare, which is the stars of success. And as you can see, it's on Sunday Murli morning, and it's a revised of 27 March 88. And all of you are please welcome that we do these once a month uh, silence retreats, because whatever we hear from the seniors, it is good to inculcate and that can only happen once we start practicing that silence inside. So we do these once a month and we are actually falling back the last month purity which we celebrated. Uh, starting from Raksha Bandhan, going on to Janmashtami, and finally now up to Ganesh Chaturthi. So we'll be doing that tomorrow morning, 12 hours from now. So India time would be 9 to 11, and the West Coast time is 8.30, next 12 hours. And continuing with her Values for Life series, we have another senior brother who's the Brahma Kumari's coordinator of Latin America on Honesty, 2nd October, next weekend. And all of you know in India, it's the Mahatma Gandhi's birthday, which is very famous and who's very famous and celebrated as a very honest individual. And, and Bhai, it's yeah, also yeah. Um, uh, the day, the international, the UN International Day on Nonviolence. And it's okay, a day yeah. dedicated to Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, perfect, because he was the preacher of nonviolence. And thank you so much for uh, uh, sharing that thing. So, And you are the one who will be speaking on honesty. I like to use the word in between on honesty. That was radical honesty and brutal honesty. So again, we are so fortunate. Sister Gayatri will be there for one more session, sharing her thoughts uh, one week after the talk on honesty by Brother Ken and then by Sister Gayatri. And this is our elegant calendar. I'm not going to announce now, but uh, since it's in front of you, we'll be having a special event on the first birthday. We'll be completing one year this October on the World Values Day, which is on the 21st of October next month. So uh, we'll be sending you all the invitations and WhatsApp uh, later as well. And feel free to uh, write in to us on this email address and visit our website of vehasa.in. And whatever we have, people have missed the live events, you can just tell them you can visit on omshanti.tk forward slash workshops. Uh, so with this, I'm sorry, I've taken a bit of more time. It's already 9.30, but we would want Sister Gayatri to take us in the meditation mode for the next five to 10 minutes. Over to you, Sister. Yeah. Okay, so let's sit comfortably. Let's concentrate on success as a spiritual birthright. And let's start with being visionaries ourselves. Successful people are visionaries. They envision 
what they want and they envision who they are. So let's visualize God's constellation of stars. Where do I fit in God's constellation of living stars? I am a star of success. Success is my birthright. It is a right I'm endowed with by God. Recognizing this to be a spiritual truth. And reflecting on this truth as an imperishable one. I ask myself, what does success mean to me? What one spiritual value that is core to me describes success. Let us for one minute be in silence. And let the silence show us the score value and the way it defines my inner success.
when the score value is connected to the superpower of God, to God's Shakti, And it molds and shapes my awareness and it emerges my potential. And it gives me the capacity to express itself through my attitude and through my vision. Then my action is successful. And through that successful action, I the soul celebrate. my accomplishment. And this accomplishment cultivates of being my true self. Success is to be my true self. to bring benefit what So thank you so much once again, Gayatri Didi, for your time and the beautiful experience we all had today. Thank you. Um, before we end, can we just take a picture? Sister Gayatri, we always take it as a memorial for us. Um, and a lot of people have opened up their video. So thank you, everyone. Just I'm taking it now. Thank you, Gayatri, sister. Thank you, everyone. Bye now. Bye everyone. Good night. Good night. And I wish you a successful life. Thank you. <laughs>